Hello and welcome to Fermilab's Earth Day celebration. My name is Holly Cleghorn and I'm an education facilita facilitator, similar to a teacher here at Fermilab Laboratory. Today, I'm excited to share with you on how you can be a wildlife helper in your backyard and your neighborhood. For a recorded version of this presentation, you can go to the Fermilab education website. And on there, there's an extra winter bird feeder found as well. I'll be asking you some questions throughout this presentation. So please feel free to put your responses in chat. Also, if you have any questions, I'll answer those at the end of the presentation. So you can put those in chat as well. So throughout this presentation, you'll have the opportunity to create habitats for animals, water sources, and bird feeders. These are some supplies that would be helpful for completing these activities. <clears throat> Many of these things you probably have at home or in your yard, but if you don't have them right now, that's totally okay. Once you see how we make these things, then you can always go back and gather the supplies later. <clears throat> so Fermilab is America's particle physics and accelerator laboratory. That means that here at Fermilab, scientists study the very, very tiniest things that you can't even see um, and that the world is made out of. And they study how those things work. However, Fermilab is located on 6,800 acres of land, which is about 10 square miles. We have been designated a National Environmental Research Park which means that we are like an outdoor laboratory where people can come and study our special environment. We have over 1,200 acres of restored prairie with many animals. We even have a herd of bison that you can come visit when we open again to the public. <clears throat> Take a look at these pictures here. Animals try to live in all of these types of environments. Can you type in chat what you think might make it difficult for an animal to survive in these types of places? What do you think? Okay. So some of your ideas are they could get hit by a car. It might be too dry or too cold, too hot. The temperature might be a problem. Lack of food I see on there as well. And those were some of the same ideas that I came up with too. So as you can see, I also thought that the extreme temperature, extremely hot or extremely cold could be a problem for animals and they may, they may require some sort of a shelter to protect them. Also the lack of water, either in the desert where it's evaporated or if it's frozen, like in the picture at the top. You can see that there may also be a lack of food which, which someone also pointed out and a lack of habitat, especially in the city or where you can see all of those roads that could cause animals to suffer. In this presentation, I'm teaching you how to be a steward in your yard and your neighborhood. So let's think about what is a steward. A steward is the job of taking care of something or someone. You probably are already a steward in your own home by helping with family members, taking care of your pets, or other ways that you might help around your house. How can you be a steward in your yard or neighborhood? Type in chat what you think you could do to help wildlife around your neighborhood. What are some ideas you come up with? So one idea is to provide food for birds, like with a bird feeder. Cleaning up your yard, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Planting native plants and watering the plants. Great ideas, everyone. 
So one of the things that I have here is you can actually leave plants and leaves in your yard throughout the winter time. We think we often have to clean everything up, break up all the leaves and get rid of all of that stuff. But the animals really like that and it's good for them. It allows animals to have some shelter and food and for plants to possibly even reseed for the next year. You can plant wisely, which someone put in chat. And what that means is to plant trees and flowers that would naturally grow where you live. And we call these native plants. These types of plants are good because they don't require a lot of chemicals to survive and they provide the proper food and habitat for the organisms where you live. We can also help out animals. And how might we do that? We could provide fresh water, habitat, and food for birds. So in order to provide habitat or homes for animals, we sometimes need to leave nature alone. But before we get there, let's take a look at this picture here. What are some animals that might live in Illinois near Fermilab? I gave you one example here of a goose. Can you think of some other animals that might live in our neighborhoods or near our homes um, that we might see on a daily basis? I see hawks. That's awesome if you see hawks in your neighborhood. Robins, so birds. Squirrels, lots of squirrels, maybe even chipmunks. Coyotes, definitely. Deer and mice. Foxes. Yeah, I see all of those as well. We have such a variety of animals that live near us. And oftentimes we take them for granted or don't even really notice them. Here in Illinois in the Midwest, we have um, quite a variety. And I'm going to show you some others that I came up with. Bees or other insects might be in your neighborhood. Here's that coyote that someone mentioned. Deer, bison. Now these guys may not live in your neighborhood. We do have a herd of bison at Fermilab and they used to live throughout the United States. Robins and birds, which someone also mentioned. Squirrels and chipmunks also can be found. Now in order to provide habitat or homes for animals, we sometimes need to leave nature alone, like I mentioned before, or always, um, instead of always trying to clean it up. Animals like the things that look kind of messy to us, like leaves, rocks, and sticks. So you can place piles of rocks around your yard or near a water source. Piles of sticks and twigs and leaves are also great habitats for many types of animals. Just make sure to keep these things away from your home and the street to keep people um, and the animals safe as well. Also, trees and logs and stumps can provide places for animals to live. Now, since water sources are often interrupted or might even be polluted, we can easily provide fresh water for animals. And it's so fun to watch them enjoy a bath or a drink. You will need a plastic or metal dish, rocks, sticks, and water that isn't frozen. So place the rocks or sticks in the water for the birds to land on. You may want to put fresh water in each day. And if it gets below freezing at night, you may need to put water that's slightly warmer in there so that it doesn't freeze. You may see squirrels, chipmunks, or even butterflies coming to your water as well. Finally, we'll be making feeders for animals, but not just any animal. We don't want to feed animals if it's going to cause harm to them or to ourselves. Can you put in chat some animals that you think we probably should not be feeding? What do you think are some animals that we need to keep our distance from and not feed? Skunks for sure. Your parents will also appreciate if you stay away from the skunks. Coyotes, geese. Great ideas, everyone. I agree with those as well. So you can see from my pictures, I came up with, again, the bison, which you're not finding in your neighborhood, but if you did, you'd wanna stay away from him. Coyotes, foxes, deer, none of these animals are we going to be providing food for. 
And you may wonder why. Well, the reason we're not providing food for these animals is because they can become dependent on us. So if we feed them, go on vacation, and don't feed them during that time, they could starve because they would become reliant on our food source. It could also create disease within their populations, and it would be dangerous both to the animal and to us as well. Finally, we will be making feeders, but we will be making them specifically for birds. So here is our list of supplies and the types of feeders that we're going to learn about today. So for the food supplies, you can have um, apples, oranges, blueberries, cranberries, cherries, um, plain peanuts work well, uh, peanut butter or sun butter, and bird seed. Please stay away from things like chocolate, table scraps, or bread. Those are things that are not good for birds. The feeders that, we're, that I'm going to show you how to make today are a milk jug feeder, a Lego feeder, a fruit feeder, and a pine cone feeder. Or I encourage you to come up with your own creative feeder, one that maybe I haven't even thought of. So the first feeder on here is a milk jug feeder. Most of us have milk jugs at home, or you may have another plastic container like this. You also would need string or yarn, scissors, sticks or skewers. The skewers work really well. Some people use them for cooking and they are sharp at one end, so you have to be careful, but it makes it easy for it to go through the plastic and bird food. The first step you're going to take in making this feeder is to cut a large hole in the side of your jug. You can put in one hole if you want, such as this example here, or you can cut holes on each side of your feeder if you would like to do that. You're going to pierce the jug carefully with your sticks or skewers. Now, why in the world are we putting sticks through our bird feeder? Can someone write in chat and tell me what is the purpose of those sticks? Why do we need those? Great ideas, everyone. I see that people said it's a perch for the birds, and that's absolutely right. The birds need a place to land so that they can eat. It also helps to keep the food source clean because then their feet are not landing on the food. They can land on the stick and eat the food comfortably and safely. For step three, you're gonna pierce two holes on either side of the cap and push your yarn through the holes for a hanger. You can take the cap off to make this easier. If you want, you could also just tie the string directly around the cap, that can work as well. Fill your feeder with appropriate bird seed and hang it from a tree or if you're in an apartment, a balcony or a neighbor's tree, somewhere where you can watch the birds enjoy the food. A Lego feeder is one of my favorites because you can be really creative with the pieces. So for this, you need a Lego base plate, Lego bricks, string or yarn and bird seed. If you do not have a Lego base plate, what you can do are take various Lego pieces, overlap them to make um, a square or rectangle to use for the bottom of your feeder. The first step for this is to start with your base plate and place a layer of Legos, kind of like a wall, around the outside of the plate. This is going to help hold the bird seed in. Um, make it a couple of Legos high, probably three or four actually would be best because then you can get a little bit more bird food on there. Next is a really fun part. You get to build a structure in the middle of your Lego feeder. So this structure can look like anything you want as long as you leave some space around the outside for the bird food to go. You also wanna make sure there are some holes or openings either somewhere in the blocks or you can see in my picture, I happen to have Legos that had holes in them. The reason for that is you want the yarn to be able to go through the base plate or the wall around the base plate so that you can hang it up on, from a tree. You can also use Duplo pieces or special pieces like this Batman piece that I found. Finally, you're going to thread your string or yarn through the holes in your base plate and make a strong knot at the top. Now, if mom or dad or your teachers give you permission um, to glue the pieces together, that will make it last a lot longer, especially on very windy days. 
Um, as I said, my Lego bricks happen to have holes in them. If yours don't, just leave a space in between some of your bricks so that you can put your string through it. And finally, you're gonna fill your feeder with bird seed um, and find a good place to hang up your feeder from a tree or balcony and enjoy watching those birds. A fruit feeder is super simple, but I have found that a lot of birds really enjoy this feeder. It takes very few supplies, which makes it fun. You can use an orange or a grapefruit, string or yarn, two skewers or sticks, and bird seed. So for this one, make sure you use a large orange if possible, um, or a grapefruit because you're gonna fill that part up with the bird seed. You're gonna cut your orange or grapefruit in half and clean out the inside and you can eat that part so it doesn't go wasted. There are also several um, types of birds like robins and bluebirds and orioles that actually eat that fruit. So you could put the fruit out or you can just cut it in half and leave it this way if you'd like to feed those types of birds. For our, um, for this particular case, I cleaned out the fruit and I took skewers and sticks and I made a cross way through the middle of the fruit and I filled up my, um, this was grapefruit with seed. Then I tied string or yarn around the sticks and I tied it securely in a knot and hung it from my tree or balcony. The great thing about this feeder is there's very little waste. When the birds were done with it, I saw it fell to the ground and something actually ate the outside of the grapefruit as well. So all I had left were the sticks and string and I could make another feeder with that. A pine cone feeder is maybe the one that you're most familiar with. So for this, you use a pine cone. You can use organic peanut Peanut butter or sun butter is fine. Bird seed and the stringer yarn. Cover your pine cone in sun butter or peanut butter and roll it in seeds. Then you're going to tie string or yarn around your pine cone and hang it up from your tree or balcony. It's fun to make several of these and hang them from different heights and in different locations so you can see different types of birds coming. Now, I want you to think like an engineer. Can you create your own special feeder that is unique from the ones that I created? There are some things that all feeders require, and if you have these, then you can be really creative. So you will need the food source, seeds, nuts, berries, fruit. You can look online to make sure you have the appropriate food um, for the appropriate animals and make sure to stay away from the ones that are dangerous. You will need a container or something to put the food in, sticks for the birds to land on or skewers, Create a way to hang up your feeder with string or yarn um, and some steady place to put it like a tree. And then finally, you can hang it up in a safe place for the birds. Thanks so very much for joining me today as we discussed how you can be a wildlife steward or helper in your yard or neighborhood. Fermilab is currently closed to the public, but when we are open again, we have opportunities for you to be a wildlife steward here with us. This website shows various volunteer opportunities that you could come do with your family. These include things like seed collection um, to help continue to restore our prairie and getting rid of plants that don't belong in our environments, which are called invasive species. Any help that you are able to provide to the natural world and wildlife is always worthwhile. Thank you so much for joining us today and I hope you have fun making those feeders. If any of you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat section and I would be happy to help you with those at this time. Thank you. Okay, I see that we're getting some questions. Okay, we do have a couple of questions. Uh, does anybody want to add more while we're talking? Go right ahead. Oh, I need to start my video here. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, why do we have to use organic peanut butter? Can you use regular peanut butter instead? That's a good question and thank you for asking that. Organic peanut butter is better because it doesn't have all the additives that regular peanut butter has. If you look on the side of your peanut butter jar, you're going to see a lot of words on there that are really long. And a lot of those things are things that aren't really good 
for the birds and probably aren't always the best for us either. So we want the healthiest, most natural form of peanut butter we can so that we're giving the birds good nutrients to eat. Okay. Uh, also, do you have some more examples that you could show of some of your uh, bird feeders? Sure. So these are the bird feeders that I made. These are the ones that I talked about in the presentation today. So this is um, the one that I showed earlier. We have each of the examples here. Um, but I just want you to know that you can make bird feeders out of so many different things besides what I showed you here today. My daughter made one out of a paper milk jug. Um, I've seen them made out of glass bottles for hummingbirds. Um, there's such a variety. So um, please feel free to come up with your own creative ideas. As long as you have those main things that, that are required for the bird feeder, you should have a lot of fun creating them. Okay, Holly. Uh do I have to worry about attracting the wrong kind of bird to my bird feeders? Great question. So some birds are more predatory birds where they're birds that are going to be um, hunting on other birds. So there are certain things you can do to help avoid that type of thing. Hanging up your bird feeders in safe areas are good. Some of those larger birds have a tendency to eat food that's on the ground. So if you keep the, bir the bird feeders hung up, um, that would help. Also, some of the more delicate bird feeders actually, like this one here, um, is going to attract um, birds that would eat, um, you know, smaller food like chickadees and some of those smaller birds. So keeping those things in mind and some of the food that we feed to birds, lots of birds like them. So you may end up attracting some birds in the area that, um, that are more predatory birds. Um, and that's okay too, as long as you're okay with it. But depending on how you hang it and where you put it, if you hang it up in a tree um, securely, that would be a good place for it to be safe for most of the birds. I did also get a question as where the recording would be posted, but I also got an answer. If you check further down in your chat, uh, there, it will be on the Fermilab education site and she entered that link into the chat. So it, that was asked and answered. Uh, a really good question that we have, and I know a lot of people wonder about this, is can you have a bird feeder year round or do we really only want bird feeders in the winter? So I've looked into this a little bit as well because it's such an interesting question. So we definitely want to have bird feeders in the winter. And what I've read is actually now is a really good time to have bird feeders out as well. Um, coming off of winter, um, birds may still be struggling. Migratory birds may be coming back to the area and not all the plants that they require are out. So spring is also a great time to have bird feeders. Definitely throughout the summer, you want to have your fresh water available for them. And then going into the fall, some of those more heavy bird feeders again. So you can leave them out year round, but there are definitely some times of year where they are more needed. Okay. And another question is, if we don't have any bird feeder and if we don't put on a bird feeder, what's our, what are the birds eating? So birds eat a whole variety of things. It depends on the bird. Some birds eat insects, some eat worms, some um, eat seeds from plants. You know, there's a lot of native plants in the area where they get seeds and nectar from. Um, some birds eat other birds. Um, so it just depends, but they are um, wild animals. And so they are capable of getting most of those things themselves. But as we talked about, because their environment is so broken up with cities and um, because of climate change and all of the changes that are happening in our environment, us providing food and water sources for them is becoming more important than ever. Okay, I think that's all the questions we have. We have a little bit more time. If anybody can think of another question real quickly, I think we can take maybe one or two more questions. Okay, I think we might be done, but Holly, thank you so much. And thank you all for attending, all you participants. It was very nice to have you all here. Thank you. And do check out our education website at Fermilab. There are a number of videos, including this video will be posted as well as others. Uh, so do check it out. And again, thank you for coming and thank you, Holly. Thank you for joining us. Happy Earth Day, everyone.
拜拜。